This video is one in a series of technical tutorials produced by Plextech RF Integration. Hello, today we're going to look at the design of planar spiral balance on a gas mimic process. Now probably the most common application for these planar spiral balance are in mixers. So we're going to end the presentation by looking at a mixer design, a double balance mixer design using two of the balance that we're going to design, and we're going to look at a quad diode ring. Okay, so let's begin by looking at the balance function. What is a balance? A balance is a circuit that converts a unbalanced or single-ended input into a differential or balanced output. In mimic design or microwave design, they're often represented by wire-wound transformers, uh, this symbol here. So again, single-ended input and a differential output. So there are many types of uh, spiral balance. Um, we're going to be specifically looking at planar spiral balance today, so we're not going to be looking at any of the uh, stacked inductor ones that uh, are quite common nowadays in silicon processes, for example. So all the layers we're going to be looking at are on the same metal layer within the mimic process. I've got a few examples here and what I've done is I've drawn the primaries and the secondary spirals in different colours so we can actually see how they interact but essentially both of these uh, layers are the same metal layer in the mimic process. So the obvious first one to start with is a simple interwound one, this one designed by uh, Mr Furlan. So the primary spiral is represented by this red spiral, so in here, out here on this underpass uh, to a wire. And the secondary spiral is represented in blue, so here are our two differential outputs. So you can see how the two spirals are interwound and offset. Rab John came up with this symmetrical version, which is totally symmetrical about this axis. So again, the primary is shown in red, so here's our input, here's our other input terminal uh, to ground, and here are our, our two differential outputs from the secondary. Now one of the balance that we favour a lot here at Plextech is the Marchand balance. This one's slightly different um, and I've shown it here again primary in red. The other terminal of the primary is left open circuit in a Marchand balance and the two secondary spirals are shown here in blue. This is the equivalent circuit of a Marchand balance. So we have a single ended input here each one of these sections is la approximately landed by 4 at the centre frequency and the, out the other end of the primary is left open circuit in a marching balance. So our two sections of the secondary are shown here, the two ends are ground and the differential output is taken here. OK, so let's move on to uh, ADS. So we start off by looking at the layout of the LO marching balance. So this is our simple three-port balance, single-ended LO input and the differential LO output here which is going to drive our mixer. So this is a real uh, layout using the proper layers of the process so both the spirals are in the same uh, thick metal layer here. Now we have several degrees of freedom. We have the overall size if you like of the spiral. Uh, each one of these sections is approximately land by four at the center frequency as I've said. We have the impedance of the primary, here it's quite high impedance and therefore a thin line. We have the impedance of the secondary, it's wider and therefore lower impedance. And we have the spacing. So let's look at the simulation of this. So basically we've done a full EM simulation of that using ADS momentum. This is just looking at the S parameters generated from the data set. So if I sweep here. Okay, let's have a look at the two outputs. So basically we should, in an ideal situation, see 3 dB uh, output loss from each uh, output. So we have about 1 dB excess loss. Uh, that's due basically to the fact that the planar spirals are going to be lossy. Uh, no two ways about that. And essentially we see that we have plenty of roll-off at the very high frequencies and the low frequencies. So we have a certain band over which our balance is a reasonable loss. And I'd say it's definitely less than 10 and greater than 20 gig for this circuit. They're not identical from the two arms, but they're, they're very close. Uh, if we look at the phase, again, we see essentially that we have approximately 180 degrees across a very wide band between the two. If we look at this graph here, which gives the uh, deltas, 
The red curve here shows the difference in the two amplitudes. So essentially beyond 20 gigahertz, there's almost no difference between the two. Starts to roll off at low frequencies, but even at 6 gigahertz, we have less than a dB difference between the two arms. In terms of the angle, we have essentially 180 degrees, plus or minus a few over a very wide bandwidth. And just to finish, we'll have a quick look at the input match. So we have a reasonable input match, certainly greater than 10 dBs, uh, below 10 and around 20 gig final frequency. So I'm now going to stick the history on. We're now going to look at a second ballon. This time we're looking at the RF ballon, of which we're also going to extract the IF signal. So we're going to do the center tap version of the march end and turn it into a four port and extract the IF from here. So again, this is uh, reversed. We have the RF input here into the primary and our differential RF output here from the secondary. Now this time, rather than have the two ends of the secondary terminated in grounds, we come them together and then short them at RF to ground via this larger value capacitor here. This gives us a center tap where we can extract the IF via this filter. So we're going to do a, three, a full uh, EM simulation of uh, this whole ballon, including the IF filter. So let's look at the data set here. Let's see this. So what we see is very similar performance uh, in band, both in terms of magnitude and angle and match. We notice that at the uh, low frequencies, uh, we have some very strange performance here, but basically in the 10 to 20 gig range, there's, there's no difference. So basically the IF filter has a very uh, strange effect at the low frequencies, as we'd expect. So the real compromise in this design really is how low we can go with the RF and how high we can go with the IF. If we now take a look at a mixer example, So this is a mixer, a double balanced diode mixer using the two bands we've just spoke about. So here's our LO input here through our LO ballon. So single ended LO differentially drives a quad diode ring. Our RF ballon comes in here, uh, drives the diode ring, and then we extract the IF here. Now we could actually extract the IF via uh, a straight line here, but basically using a shunt C, CUSL shunt C filter uh, gives us better spurious performance in our final mixer design. So let's have a quick look at our mixer simulation. So this is our mixer test bench, which we discussed previously in one of our talks. We're going to look at uh, low RF powers, minus 20 dBm, relatively high, higher LO powers of plus 15 dBm. We're going to sweep it over the full RF range of 6 to 22 gigahertz and we're going to look at IFs of 100 megs in this example. Now, this circuit essentially works uh, with the RF down to about 6 gigahertz and also the LO uh, and the IF basically from DC up to 4 gigahertz. So the real compromise, as I said before, is how low we can go in the RF and how high we can go in the IF. So let's just pop into this mixer. What we see is our diode ring here or correctly bonded in a, a ring formation. Here's our three port LO ballon, single ended in differential out. Here's our four port center tapped RF ballon with the extraction of the IF through the uh, included low pass filter. So if you press sweep here, it takes a few minutes this, but uh, here's a graph I prepared earlier. So basically we can see for conversion gain, negative obviously, plotted against RF input frequency, and essentially the circuit works with around seven, maybe eight dB conversion gain. Certainly works fine at 22 gigahertz. By six gigs, it's just starting to roll off, but still uh, acceptable performance. So essentially that summarizes our mix of design using two uh, planar march and spiral balloons. Um, we have plenty more examples of how to design balance and mixers as well as other gas mimic circuits on our website so please feel free to visit www.plextechrfi.com